So that brings us to our first speaker of the day, Dennis Gordon. Would you like to hit your feet and come up the front? Dennis has been uh, involved in aviation for over 40 years, deeply involved. He has 2,000 hours of glider experience, 500 hours of powered experience. He's involved himself in so many projects that you wouldn't even be able to list them on a sheet of paper, maybe a couple of sheets of paper. And uh, he's going to talk about one of his projects today, which is where he cut a Volkswagen engine in half and threw away the two back cylinders, retained the front two, and put it in the front of his aeroplane. So give me a moment and I'll arm him with the uh, microphone. I hear you ask, why cut a perfectly good engine in half? I'll go back a little bit. Home builders have used VW engines for many, many years, and they still do. The full-size VW works out somewhere around about 185 pounds. And this is a little bit heavy for uh, ultralighting. Uh, ultralight fuses are generally fairly short, so if you put a heavy engine up the front, you've got to put weight down the back or juggle the thing around so that you get the C of G in the right place. Uh, my particular aeroplane, you'll see a picture of later on, uh, is a J3 kit, which is an ultralight look-alike for a cup. Uh, I built it with the short fuse, which precluded me from using the full VW engine. Uh, later on, after I'd finished building, they extended the fuse by 16 inches, and there are a lot of kittens flying around with full-size VWs. <coughs> so the question comes, why cut the thing in half? Well, in, in, in the early days, we had two-stroke engines. A lot of people don't like two-stroke engines. They're noisy, they're high revving, uh, and in the early days they used to fail quite a lot. And there's always been a shortage of, of small four-stroke engines. You can get them today, but they're very, very expensive. You're sort of looking at twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. I never had that kind of money. Uh, and the Americans got to work about 40 years ago and decided to cut a V-dub in half. And that's exactly what they did. They put a band saw right through the middle of it and just left the front two cylinders, welded a plate on the back and put it in the, an aeroplane. It lasted about two hours before it shook itself to pieces. <laughs> So then a fellow by the name of uh, Mulholland, an American, was lying in bed one night and he thought there's got to be an answer to this. So he thought, uh, we'll put some balance weights on the, on the hub of the prop. And that cut down the vibration a little bit and the, the next one lasted about six hours before it blew itself to pieces. So, back he went, back to bed, and <laughs> said, why don't we cut the thing in half? So he did. So he, he cut it in half, but this time he balanced the crankshaft. Uh, he cut the camshaft and the crankshaft. And he left the, uh, he, he found that ran much better, but it still had oil heating uh, problems. So back to bed he went and he said, let's leave the case in one bit. And uh, still cut the crankshaft, cut the camshaft, balance the crankshaft, and see what happens. So he did this, hey presto, it's still working today. Well, about five, six years ago, 
uh, my partner, Trev Sweeting, was uh, in, the, in the States, and I got this idea, and so he bought uh, a set of plans from car engineering. Right, that's uh, the car commercially built uh, uh, half feet up. That's the full case version. Uh, flywheel goes, the propeller becomes the flywheel. And I know that works very well too because I lost a propeller once and the thing stopped dead. <laughs> uh, car sells these for about 2400 US. Uh, that's the half case version. Uh, but you have to add uh, something to cool the oil. Uh, they do put a small container on the bottom of the sump to get a little bit of extra oil. But it works quite well. But the disadvantage, the big disadvantage for an ultralighter is that you've got to have uh, a full engine mount for it. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. This is the engine that I started with, came out of a hippie's van up at Carnarvon. And uh, they blew up the, the uh, gearbox. When the garage man said, uh, well, it's going to knock a hole in $1,000, the hippies lost interest. So they gave him the, the V-dub and disappeared. He subsequently retired and came down to uh, Aurelia and he uh, decided to bring the engine with him and he advertised it for $85. <laughs> but you can see the state that it was in. <clears throat> this is John Chitty, my friend who incidentally had a, a, a kitten with a long fuse large and a full V-dub. And uh, he's hitting the uh, engine to get all the dust off it. This is the first bits that you require. You note that the front barrel holes have been bored out. Uh, they're bored out to 92 millimetres. The original engine was a 1600. Now from a 1600, of course, you get 1600 cc's. We get, with the big 92 barrels and pistons, we get 1,082 out of two cylinders. Uh, the Americans reckon that with one carby, you end up with about 35 horsepower. Two carbies, about 37 horsepower at 3,300 revs. I must add here that the horses are pretty small. <laughs> They're those little Shetland ponies. <laughs> the plates go over the, the back two cylinders. Uh, V-dubs are uh, notorious for having cracks uh, between the valves. Uh, I was lucky, uh, one had, had cracks on both sides uh, and the other one didn't. So I was able to cut the one in half and you would think that that would be a very big job but actually when you see it, there is very, very little metal holding the thing together. It takes about 10 minutes with a good hacksaw to, to cut it in half. <coughs> the uh, intakes uh, have pipes welded on them. Uh, the um, rocker shaft is cut and uh, a, a new screw put in the end there to support that. It's only held uh, on by that one nut. Um, you can extend the oil filler. Uh, I, I should say everything goes. 
uh, all you need is the basic engine. Uh, you, you can't afford to have a starter motor or a generator or anything like that. Uh, and one of the things that goes is the filler. So you can either have that extended one. Uh, in my present engine, I've cut it off about there. Uh, so that's the, the basic thing. The, uh, the little rocker shaft is cut in half. Make up these little plug holes to, to go in here to cover up the unused uh, push rods. That's the crankshaft, been cut in half with the balance weights welded on. Uh, the balance weights are just made out of a piece of uh, 3 8 steel uh, with a, a 5 inch circle, uh, sorry, a 6 inch circle uh, and then cut in half. And you need to find a pretty smart welder uh, because you don't want them coming off. <laughs> this is where the propeller goes, that's not extended. This is setting up the, uh, <coughs> the free play uh, in the crankshaft, which has got to be something around about five millimetres. So you set it up with a, uh, a gauge with a, uh, with the chip through. Uh, it's uh, probably the, the biggest job in the whole engine because that's got to be right. Uh, my present engine, is the, the free play has blown out to about 10. Um, and uh, that's 10 thou. It seems to be running all right. And that's not getting any worse. So I bit the bullet and said, well, we'll see what happens. The, uh, <coughs> the engine is starting to come together. The uh, propeller hub is an interesting thing. It's only got about uh, an inch to fit onto the shaft. So what you do, you put the shaft in the fridge overnight and then you warm up the hub. And as quick as a flash, <laughs> you put the hub onto the shaft. And you've got to get it right because you need about 50 tons to pull the thing off. <coughs> I've done three of them now and I've, I've been lucky. It is also held with a big bolt that goes through there. Uh, that's got something like uh, 180 to 200 foot pounds of, of torque on, onto it. Uh, it. It does have a, a keyway in there and I've never had any trouble <coughs> with the hub coming loose. Uh, you can see my little oil fuller. I did it like that because when I take the top cowling off uh, it's, it's nice and handy and the, and the big long ones seem to be a bit of a problem. The case is ready to go together. You can see the little plugs there plugging up the two back holes on this side and there's two more on the other side. Uh, the case is cut away to try and save uh, a little bit of um, weight. The whole thing is, is bolted onto a small <coughs> one eighth inch thick marine grade aluminium and then that bolts straight onto the firewall with uh, little one inch spaces. You don't need any engine mounts. Uh, the thing runs very, very smoothly, uh, providing you've done your balance. These are the finished heads. You can see the new intakes for the carbies. Uh, once again, you get to work with the hacksaw and carve off it, any bits that are not required, even take a, a little bit of the cooling fins off. Uh, this is where the thing is joined to this one here. So you can see the very little metal to cut when you, when you cut it in half. Uh, the 
Rocket covers are probably the hardest thing to get right. Not only do you cut the best one in, in two, uh, but then you have to do a bit of welding and weld this end on, and it's very difficult to, to get it nice and true. Uh, I've got a problem with the engine in my uh, kit right, right now. Uh, this particular one here keeps on uh, leaking. So that's the finished thing before it was all tidied up and painted. It's got a standard uh, 009, an old fashioned 009 distributor. It's got electronic uh, points to do away with the mechanical points. Uh, two of the of the contacts are, are shorted out. Uh, when you're starting it, it's, it's quite in, interesting. It's a uh, uh, Prop, uh, hand, hand propped, of course, um, but you get one missing compression, and then a compression, and then another missing compression, and then a compression. So you have a bit of a, uh, a, a fiddle. I always prop started from from behind, and it usually goes on on the second or third uh, after it's primed up. It usually goes on the second or third compression. We set it up at John Chetty's place on, a, on an engine stand, and this is the, the first run. Uh, this is what I said about the, uh, the leaky uh, rocker covers. The real swines to, to seal up. Uh, we just use an ordinary glider battery, a, a gel cell, 12 volt. There's no charging. Uh, that, that battery will run the engine for about five hours. And I have run them down as low as eight volts and it will still keep you airborne. Uh, I'm hanging on to the thing. It, it, it wanted to start moving forward. And this is my brother laughing at me. That was the first installation in the, uh, in the kitten. Uh, but, uh, I wrote to the design a car, or emailed him actually, and said, can I fly it without cowlings? And he said, no way. Uh, he said, uh, it's too much drag, and he said, it will fly, but it, it's a handful. So I just bought some El Cheapo aluminium and cobbled together a very quick cowling, and it was test flying with that cowling. Uh, originally, I had pipes going from the, the, the both sides, and the carby was under underneath here. One one carby, <coughs> and that's proving that the thing really does fly. And yeah. I thank you.